So here we are for the final round of the season. It is around Le Mans. Yep, we are back to France for the race along Le Mans. However, things will be a little bit different. We're going to be doing the version that does not have the chicanes down the long straight, giving us some more high speed action for both F1 and F2. With this being the final round of the season, let's find out who will be crowned the F2 driver's champion and the F1 driver's champion. So here we are for the race around, or qualifying session around Le Mans for the second time this season and we're going to go out with Dennis Poirier to set the benchmark. So basically in this race we do have a driver change for this final round of the season. Maurice Trintillon is replaced Robin Manson who is suspended for this race and in his place will be the debutant of Philippe Elisellen as we see here who is the fourth driver of 10 to leave the pits to go and set the a lap time with 15 minutes on the clock let's see who will get pole position for this race can McGrath close in on Terufi and Vila Resi or can the Italians pull away from the American to ensure an Italian wins the F2 championship well we're gonna find out as we've got just over 13 minutes left on the clock here comes Espoir to come across the start finish line What's the benchmark time that he set? It is 3.21.6. Villaresi 3.18.8. So, Luigi Villaresi uh, takes first blood, goes into pole position at the moment. Just under 3 seconds faster than the Brett. So the question is, how about everyone else? Can anyone else beat Villaresi? And what's it, that person's time going to be? And that person is Dwayne Carter. It does a 319.6, a very decent time from the American. Well, this is only his second race of the season. There's Andrew Simon, 320.0. What about Philippe Elisellen, the debutant, 325.0. Not a good time from the Frenchman. Especially when he wants to try and make it, this could, this could be his chance to shine and show to the French team that he is worthy of being in the Formula Olympics for 1956. Jim McGrath goes into fourth, Willie Heeks goes uh, to the bottom, 329.4, and Tarufi goes fifth, 321.0. This is this could be exactly what Villaresi needs to get to, uh, ahead of Tarufi by one by one point. And now Alan Brown goes into second with a 319.3. So we've only got one driver left who hasn't set time yet. We're going board with Jim McGrath who's in fifth position. He's currently in a battle with one of the West Germans. That's Woody Heat he's in a bit of a battle with. 1.6 seconds off the pace in the first section. That could be down to him struggling. This one of his rivals, Peter Taruffi, just ahead of him. Who is currently sick? Who is currently seventeenth slower than him in qualifying? Okay, Pierre Terufi stays out, but Jim McGrath doesn't, and Pierre Terufi improves his time, three twenty point eight eight eight. However, he is still about half a second down on Jim McGrath, so Jim McGrath does hold on to being in the top five. And we've only got three cars left on the track. That's there: Tony Allman, Dennis Poor, and Pierre Terufi. Now, we've already had Terufi and Poor do two laps. Tony Allman has yet to go out a second time, well, to complete a second flying lap. If he is planning to do that, is he going to stay out? Or will he go into the pits and abort the lap himself for ninth? Less than three minutes of the three minutes of the session to go. And Tony Allman has decided he is going to stay out and complete the flap. He does, he does not improve his time though. 327.8, four times slower than his best time. So we've got less than, we've got about two and a half minutes left to go. I don't think any of them are going to s complete a third run. So I think it's fair to say this is going to be the result for the race. So Vila the race is going to get three bonus points. Uh, Alan Brown is going to get two, and Dwayne Carter is going to get one more bonus point. And here we go, here is the final results. As expected, everyone else who stayed out just went into the pits to end their sessions. So as you can see, Luigi Villaresi takes pole possession and gets the three bonus points. That does put him one point ahead of him. Or put one point ahead of Terufi, sorry. 
uh, two points going to Alan Brown in who qualified second. So definitely going to put himself in a good position to finish strong for the United Kingdom. And Dwayne Carter gets an gets more bonus points qualifying in third. Hopefully this time he'll finish. Um, he'll be able to finish a race for the first time this season. And the two championship rivals, Jim McGrath, sits in fifth with Pierre Tarufi on the, joining him on the third row. So before we get into this exciting race, we need to do the F1 qualifying session. So let's head over and find out who is in a good position to win the F1 championship. So here we are for the F1 qualifying session around the Mont, and it's going to be Tulip Graffin that's going to go out first to try and set the benchmark. Of course, something to know about this race, Robert Madison has indeed been suspended for this last race of the season. That puts him out of contention in the championship. Taking his place is the return of Maurice Trintignant, who, who took part in only one race while was back in Spain, where he got second place behind the other debutant of that race, which was Sam Hanks. So, what can, can Maurice Trintignant show that he deserves to be an F1 driver? Well, I think he has proven that during how well he did in F2 and ha and I think he'll do well in F1 and probably will end up getting a full-time seat for 1956. So the three drivers in contention for the championship, Giuseppe Frina is 12 points ahead of second place Ascari, who's a further 10 points ahead of Mike Hawthorne. The only way Mike Hawthorne could win the championship is he'd have to win this race as long as Farina doesn't score more than three points. A very unlikely scenario for Hawthorne to pull up in Mike Hawthorne has only won two has won two races this season. Both races were at the the, the, the two oval tracks we went to, the European Oval and the Indy five hundred. And Hawthorne's appearance at Le Mans the first time round, well he he DNF'd. So I don't think Hawthorne is gonna have is gonna be able to achieve uh, first place and dethrone Farina or Ascari, the, the top spot to win the championship. I mean, the nation's competition, Italy have already won it, so United Kingdom and France are battling for second, while France and United States are battling for third. That's essentially all the battles we've got left in, this cha in these two championships. Nation table, we already have a winner in the Drivers' Championship. It might come down to an Italian, an all Italian showdown between Sky and Farina, with Hawthorne having a very, very minimal chance of being able to pull off a, a surprise win to win the championship. So here goes to the referee to come across the line. What is his time going to be? His time is going to be. 3 minutes and 6 seconds. That's a pretty decent time there from to the graph and read. But imagine that time is going to be broken by those in contention to win the championship. Okay. So the second driver came up. Okay, that it was really okay, really Fisher! Graph and teammate break goes into first place. 303.3. That's nearly 3 seconds ahead of Graph and read. That's an amazing time. Alberto Ascari does a one does a three oh six point one goes behind to the graph and read. Okay, we've got other times coming in. We've got Fritz Reese in fourth, fourth and fifth. Farina goes into second, so Giuseppe Farina determined to sh to stop um Ascari uh, catching him in the championship. Kim Wharton down to six. As I say that Hanks goes to second, Clays goes to six. Uh, we've got Rudolf Kraus and Loaf who kind of the slowest. Morris Trinting on his return goes into second. So, a really, really uh, good run there from the Frenchman. So, Morris Trinting on definitely setting himself up to get a full time seat for 956. Jean Berra does a ma an amazing job though. 303.8 goes into second. So, we've got both French drivers in their home country in the top three, so both of them could accept to get some good bonus points. As I say that, Chuck Stevenson moves into second place. This is where things are getting very interesting for sure. We're on board with your current pole setter, that's Rudy Fisher. Uh, uh, he's 800 faster than his last lap, but really this, we need to look at Alberto Ascari, the man who's not doing so well this session, but again, Giuseppe Frina is down 7th at the moment. So Alberto Ascari is half a second slower than Rudy Fisher. He's going to have to pull up all the stops if he wants to cut down his teammate to win the championship. 
Hello, we're in the second sector. That guy looks like he's doing a bit better. Tulegraphy proves his time goes ahead of Farina into seventh position. So a good performance there from the Swissman. And Alberto Ascari going to abandon the lap and go to the pits. That's a really big surprise. There's Giuseppe Farina. Is he going to complete his run or is he going to abort the lap as well? Both Italians are going to abort, the, abort their lap times. That is very surprising. So we go on board with Mike Hawthorne now, the man's still on the track, just completing the fastest part of the, of the Mon. So Hawthorne's going to have to have the push. So officially, Stevens in second, Bear a third, Hawthorne fourth, and he get down to Trintignon in fifth. Oh, we've got an incident! We have an incident with Dries van der Loof. Okay, van der Loof has gone off the track. Okay, let's find out what happened to the, to the Dutchman. What happened to him? Okay, Dries van der Loof. Oh! Got swerved into. Was that Trintignon? No, it was Sean Berra that did that. Sean Berra completely swacked Dries van der Loof. I don't know what on earth that was about, but that's definitely going to be under investigation because that was pretty much not needed. Okay, that's a very, very bizarre moment there from Jibera. Okay, so we'll find out what happened what the penalty is for him. I mean, Dries van der Loof could, uh, could be uh, given, a, given a spot into the race. Uh, Mike Hawthorne goes ahead of Sean Berra, so that's probably karma for the Frenchman that he's no longer in a bonus point position. Okay, Giuseppe Farina has gone back here, so Farina is going, is going to try again to try and set a better time to catch Rui Fischer and to ensure he stays ahead of Ascari. I mean, he is on, he is ahead of Ascari, he's an 8, he's an eight while Ascari is ninth. So we're going on board with Giuseppe Farina. He's going down to this, the final section of the track, got a couple of chicanes, and then they, he is on his way to set uh, his final flying lap, with just over a minute left of the session to go, Giuseppe Farina. Goes awfully wide, that's going to cost him some time. Rudolf Krauss from East Germany improves his time, but he stays in 18th place with 320.3. Uh, he's nearly reaching the 3 minute mark of his qualifying run. But looks like Giuseppe Frina is struggling. 8 tenths, okay, 8 tenths. 8 tenths, that's not too bad. 8 tenths is still decent, uh, decent for him. It'll definitely help him gain a few positions. Oh, he's going to lose it there. And Giuseppe Farina goes awfully wide and loses all the ground he made up and thus he has to sell for eight. Oh dear, that's really unfortunate for Farina. He was doing so well and he just lost it at the end. Here's Mike Hawthorne. Okay, he's a tenth floor. Okay, he is closing in on Fisher. So he might end up getting two bonus points if he's gonna if he crosses the line. Okay. Or is he going to ban the run? No, he's going to ban the run self a third. Okay. Uh, he's going to wait for everyone else to finish their, their run. Oh, and as I say, that Barrow has finished the run, and that's the end of qualifying. So, what a interesting result that was. So, Ray Fisher gets the three bonus points. Chuck Stevenson gets two, but more notably, Mike Hawthorne does get one bonus point. So that's going to help him close in on his rival, well, the two Italian drivers. So, filling the table, it does mean it does mean Mike Hawthorne is now twenty-one points behind, but twenty-one points, he can win. He can still win the championship. He does have to win the race in the hopes she so free doesn't get doesn't get enough points to take the title. So, with that out of the way, it's time for the final grid walk, and then of course it is time for the last time, one more race around uh, to end the 952 for Olympic season. So here we go, on to the grid walk. So for the 16th and final time of the season, it's on to the grid with Fisher Stevenson on the front row, with Mike Hawthorne and Trintion locking out row two, 
Sam Hanks is first with Jean Bear penalized down to sixth place. There's the two Italian drivers on row four. Watch out for them winning the championship. Johnny Clays and Toto Graffery round off the top ten. There's the two West Germans on row six, followed by Roger Lord and Jan Flintman, 13th and 14th. Alberto Chris was 15th, Ken Wharton penalized down to 16th. Then the, f the leading F2 driver of Villaresi and Brown on row nine. Gio Bianco and Carter on row ten. Andrew Simon and Rudolf Krauss on row eleven. There's Jim McGrath and Pierre Tarufi. Watch out for them as well. Dennis Poor, Etisel on his debut. And then it's the two West Germans from F2. And the two drivers have failed to qualify being Van der Loef and Ernst Klotwig. So, with that out of the way, it's time for the 16th and final time of the season to get onto the race and find out who will be the F1 and F2 champions. So here we are, this is it. The final round of the season around Le Mans with Rudy Fisher taking pole position, Chuck Stevenson second and Mike Hawthorne third. So in F1, Hawthorne, Freeman and Ascari are the ones that contest from the championship with Hawthorne third and both Italian drivers on the fourth row. Which one of them is going to win the championship? Chuck Stevenson needs to win this race to have a chance of the United States finishing in the top three in the nation's table. Meanwhile, France are also fighting with the United Kingdom to finish second in the championship. Meanwhile, down F2, Luigi Villaresi on pole position with his championship rivals of Jim McGrath and Tarufi down on the 12th row of the grid, with Villaresi in 17th ahead of all the other F2 cars and also ahead of two F1 drivers, Gino Bianco who's 19th and Rudolf Krauss who's 22nd. So, without further ado, let's begin this final race of the season and let's find out who will be our first ever Formula Olympic F1 and F2 champions. So here we go and we are underway. It looks like it was a really good start there from Billy Fisher. Chuck Stevenson looks like he might be passed by Mike Hawthorne going into turn one. But the question is, will he actually? There we go down to turn one. Fisher takes the lead. It looks like Hawthorne is going to take second off Chuck Stevenson. I can't really tell because we're focusing on the Swiss driver. As he is supposed to sit in. Look at that. Really, Fisher already pulling a, a substantial gap over everyone else. Let's get the Formula the car back to the pits before chaos ensues. So Fisher leads Stevenson second. Morris Trintignant has smashed to get his way into third place, getting ahead of Hawthorne. Then it's Sam Hanks fifth. Vera 6th, there's a Sky 7th and Farina 8th and there's the leading F2 car of Luigi Villaresi who's been passed by Gino Bianco who, who's uh, one of the F1 drivers. There we go down, down the long straight and Fisher does have nearly a second lead over Stevenson already. Meanwhile here's Morris Trintignant trying to get the slipstream on Stevenson and try to sneak his way into second. Trying to finish the scene strong to convince the French team to give him a full time seat for the 1956 Olympics. Back towards the front, look at this, we've got loads of cars, it's looking like it's going to be four wide. And here we come into the right hander, can everyone, will everyone get around safely? It looks like they all did this time round. The question is, can everyone keep it together coming round to the hairpin? This pressure looks like it's about to be passed by treating on. Oh, there's so many cars, there's so many cars, gives the possibility of something going wrong. Okay, everyone is safely through, it looks like. That's a good big sigh of relief. So, Stevens is out front. Fisher is now second. Trinity on third. Hanks is fourth. Hawthorne drops to fifth. Alberto Sky got past Berra for sixth. And, and there's the other championship leader, Sean, uh, no, Giuseppe Farina. Of course, Giuseppe Farina coming into this race is 12 points ahead of second place of Scarry and 21 points ahead of Hawthorne. So, Farina does have. Uh, quite a substantial advantage. Meanwhile, down in F2, Luigi Villaresi only has a one point advantage over Pier Tarufi and 19 points ahead of uh, Jim McGrath. Jim McGrath is currently 22nd and Pier Tarufi is 25th as it stands at the moment. As we focus on Alberto Sky, who's sitting in sixth position, he is chasing one of the championship contenders, Mike Hawthorne. Now Mike Hawthorne down in fifth position. Hawthorne really needs to win this race to have a, a have a slim chance of winning the championship. But Strasley Freeman would have to not score more than four points. Uh, well, actually, you'd have to have to finish no higher than ninth for Hawthorne to win. Which, the odds seem very unlikely, but can't count them out until it's mathematically impossible. 
As we see, there's uh, my thoughts. I managed to get the move on. Morris trenching on, and now he's got we've got a bit of a battle between Fisher and Hanks going on. And going into the right hander, as Trintion regains uh, four possession. And we're coming down to the hairpin, will everyone make it through safely? We know if Trintion has slipped down to ninth position. And it looks like everyone's going to make it through safely. Look at a bit of contact between Trintion and Fisher. But everyone stayed on the track at the end of the day. And now Luigi Villaresi is slipping down to. Fourth in the class as Dwayne Carr gets past him as it's, it's, it's Jim McGrath trying to get, get involved in the PC action, trying to get past both of them. And look at this, we've, it looks like we've got McGrath trying to go to the inside, but it does not work out. And Carter, it looks like he's going to hold on to the position. But Giuseppe Freeney looks like, no, uh, Luigi Villaresi, sorry, looks like he's going to try and pounce back and retake uh, 20th place. I'm looking for that down, Jim McGrath has now got past Luigi Villarese, meanwhile Pier Taruffi is uh, struggling for that down in 24th, trying to stay ahead of Dennis Poor. And now coming down, and so far, it's, right now it's a 1-2 position for America. Sam Hanks has passed up a 304.9, so we've got Stevenson first and his teammate second. So this is, um, this is looking good for the American team. Even though both American drivers are out in contention to win the drivers' championship, as well as Italy winning the nation's table, they're definitely putting, they're definitely doing the best they can to try and win this race to give them a chance in the nation's table. But Trintillon is third, which definitely would render uh, America, the United States team to have to sell for fourth in the championship. And meanwhile, here's Alberto Ascari in fifth. He no sixth, sorry. Try, still trying to catch Hawthorne for 5th place and you know, here is Giuseppe Freena trying to find his way to 8th place to try and get past to the Dragon Reach from Switzerland he is closing in but can he find his way through and it looks like he is going to so up to 8th place goes for Freena here's Alberto Scari and we can see the battle for Star Broom between Trintillon, Hawthorne and Fisher Meanwhile, we see, just further ahead, we see the two American drivers battling each other for the lead of the race. And Sam Hanks going to take the lead. Oh, Trintillon's going to get sandwiched in. Going down to the right-hander. It's looking like... Oh, this is definitely looking like this could be contact uh, between them. Coming into the hairpin. Let's see how this goes. And oh, contact from Fisher there. Definitely contact with Trintillon. Try to dive his way through, but Trintillon holds the position. Hawthorne makes way to third, as Sky stays in sixth position. And we've got trouble, the other French driver, Jean Bear, has gone off. So it looks like Jean Bear may be out of the race. Okay, let's get a replay of Bear and find out what happened to him. Okay. Going down, there's Giuseppe Farina and two of the graphics. This joint clays behind. What's their contact? Okay, coming. Uh, yes, oh, oh caught out by Giuseppe Farina, and that's him in the gravel, and that is the end of his race. So Giuseppe Farina manages to find his way through Bera by spinning him out. And of course, the inside didn't really have a lot of room, it looks like, but coming down to the corner. Yeah, he just went, yeah, he went, should have stayed behind Bera, but now sent Bera out, and Bera paid the price, so that's Sean Bera out of the. Le Mans 2 Grand Prix. And that's it, uh, yep. And meanwhile, leading the F2 class, that's Alan Brown in 18th position. Then there's Andres Timon uh, second, third, Carter, fourth, be the Resi, fifth, it's Luigi be the Resi, sixth place is the other trying to clear, Pierre Taruffi, who is in a, in a bat, in a tennis battle with Dennis Poor for the position. Morris Trinity gone. At the moment, it looks like he's saying stuff nicely. And here comes the, and there's the class leader, uh, Alan Brown, comes into the pits on the slap. That means Andrew Simon is going to take the class lead, as his teammate Dennis Pru also comes into the pits in the slap. Oh, Ruth Krauss will get ahead, but Ruth Krauss is in the F1 division, so you expect him to get ahead, but. Oh dear, Pru, uh, Ruth Krauss are really struggling with, uh, the, with uh, F2 cars. So this, so here's your class lead at the moment. That's Andrew Simon. He 
chasing down Alberto Crespo. He's only about two seconds uh, behind him as well, which is interesting. Uh, back down to straight, we've got Jose Frenos and uh, Frenos who's right behind Fisher, Trintion and Ascari. So Ascari has been reeled in by his teammate and oh! Marcus Trintion's gone off, has had a huge spin and he's taking Ascari out with him. Alberto Ascari and it looks like Alberto Ascari is going to be the one who's paid the price and he's going to be out of the race. So that means Frenos has got much, uh, a much bigger advantage to win the championship. Well that was... Chaos. Let's find out what happened there. Let's go on board with Ascari. See from his perspective. Obviously, got collected by Trintion. Did Fisher spin uh, Trintion out? Yes, he did. And he goes Ascari going in the corner. Boom. Trintion just sends him into the gravel. But Trintion is able to continue. That was absolute chaos there. So, this is the same mistake. Oh, no, we're looking at the wrong... It's Fisher, and if you look at it, not too definitely. It looks like uh, Fisher did the same thing that uh, happened to Barrow, which is getting spun out by this corner. Did he go turn left? Yes, he turned down on him. Wow, that is a really, really unfortunate way for your season to suddenly end. Yep, that's a sky out of the race. So, I think it's fair to say, Joseph Freeman is going to be your 1952 Formula Olympic champion. Now that one, now that Ascari's out of the race. Meanwhile, Hoth may still be in the race, but 21 points. He is currently sitting third, which means even if, um, even if Freeney retired, he would still win the championship. So, so I think it's fair to say Freeney is going to be your champion. Is your is your Formula Olympic champion unless something drastic happens. And Simon goes in, McGrath's going to come in, and Carter is going to stay out, so Carter will take the class lead. The rule of crowds, I think, will stay out, being an F1 driver and not an F2. Now, it is Villaresi in the pits. Now, this is, now, this is Villaresi's chance to try and get ahead. Oh, okay. McGrath's on the move already. So is Simon. Villaresi taking his time. Now, Villaresi is going to miss out. And his uh, selling is going to stay out as well. And look at that, Svidoresi is going to go down to 23rd. Well, Pierre Terrific goes up to second in the F2 class. And uh, only a couple, uh, just less than two seconds behind uh, the class leader, that's Dwayne Carter. And then it's going down to the inside. And now we're coming to the the fast right hander, and after that is is the dreaded hairpin. There's also an uh, in front of your screen there. As we see behind, there's a battle for battle going on between Trinity and Graf and Reef for seventh. Okay, here is your class leaders of F in F two, Dwayne Carter and Trufi in the pits. And the question is, will McGrath catch them? They're going into the hairpin. Uh, Kraus makes his way through. Uh, Dwayne Carter and Terufi on the move. It's going to be pretty close, but I think. McGrath might just be able to catch him. No, I don't. Th Actually, no. Dwayne Carter and Terufi are going to come out ahead. No, but yeah, there's McGrath right in the back, back behind them there. Now coming down to the rest of the fast part of the track, and Sam Hanks going to take the lead, but Steve's managed to cut off Hawthorne to hold on to second. And Freeney doing the same way as Rudy Fisher. And there's Trinity on dropping down to eighth position. Let's see, what's the gap between them and the championship? The gap is 23 points, which means we need an American driver to win. But Trinton has to be tenth or below to get it to seal the win. If they tie on points, then the victory would go to actually no, the win would go to the United States because they've won. They've got two races. Oh no, they uh, no uh, three wins from the United States, one from France. Okay, no, so the United States would, would get the win if Trinton finishes ninth. 
Okay, so so that's how it stands. America needs to win. Trintillon needs to finish eighth to to guarantee that France takes third. Meanwhile, the gap between France and the United Kingdom is only seven points, so it's not not much in between. But right now, Britain is winning. Uh, since Hawthorne side Trinity on Celine eights. And look at this, Hawthorne is just going to nose out, but coming down to the right hander, and it's gonna be three wide. Can the three drives keep it together? Uh, coming up to the hairpin, or are we gonna have uh, some drama kicking off? Here we go, coming around the corner. Okay, everyone's gonna make it through safe, it looks like. But it looks like Hawthorne isn't going to be able to take the lead, but he is going to get ahead of Chuck Stevenson though for second. So we've got America first, Britain second, and America in third. Go across the line, the faster man in the slap was Hawthorne, but there's pretty much nothing between. And Giuseppe Free is going to set the fastest time at 3.04.7. So Free is, is about 5 seconds behind the leader, but he is definitely closing in on the championship. The, three, the top three drivers. Uh, let's see, Dennis Poor is now lapped down. He's holding up that looks like uh, Hawthorne. Yes, he's, it's Hawthorne and Steve, so he's holding up there. So that's going to help Sam Hanks pull a small distance. And down the main street again, it's uh, three wide between Tarufi, Carter, and McGrath. There is nothing separating these, the three of them in this race, that's for sure. The speed of SE is down in 20. Yes, he is uh, not too far behind, but he's still a bit of a distance away. And coming down to the right hander. And Dwayne Carl looks like he's going to sneak ahead into the class lead. Here's for the SE 20th with Andrew Simon, the last F2 driver to yet to not be lapped yet. You know, that's Giuseppe Free in fourth, Ray Fisher in fifth, who's got an F2 car to lap at the moment. And here we go, going to the air pad. I see if it goes awfully wide, and Hawthorne is going to retake second place thanks to that. And there's Giuseppe Free going to sneak in behind the American, trying to get the slipstream and make his way into third position. And just like that, he is in third as we are in lap 9 of 16. To come round to start the 10th lap of the race. And he goes a bit wide, but he manages to keep it together. And Sam Hanks sets the fast lap at 3.04.4. Will anyone be able to beat that time? 3.08 from Hawthorne and 3.05 from Farina. So Farina is pushing hard, uh, being 5 seconds faster than Stevenson at last lap. But Stevenson, not going to go that easy. And there's a slow car. And I believe that is. Yeah, Andrew Simon. As, as Jim McGrath is further up, but he's, it looks like he's already a lap, he's going to be a lap, already in, though he's, no, he's about, no, he's already a lap down, because Hanks is ahead of him. So, uh, Pierre Tarufi and, and Carter battle for the lead, it's, well, continues to battle for the lead. Uh, they are only four seconds behind the last F1 car, and the track, there he is, Rudolf Krauss from East Germany. Ru Chris is quite, uh, has been consistently one of the slower drivers that like, have qualified to make it to a race. Uh, East Germany hasn't had the strongest lineup this season, but if they compete in the future for Olympic seasons, maybe they'll have a stronger lineup. They just need to find their, 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 their drivers for it. As for Arena, it looks like he's got ahead of Hawthorne to be his way into second. Yes, he has. He has gone to second. With Mike Hawthorne on side, so Stevenson has dropped, uh, dropped back. I think it has something to do with the F2 car uh, that's right behind him. I believe that's Andrew Simon still. If they're coming down to the hairpin, what's going to happen down here? Okay, looks like Freya is it's going awfully wide. Oh, Freya goes wide. Off the track he goes. Oh, and he hits. Uh, Stevenson, that was a that was a bit um, a bit appalling from that bit of driving there from Giuseppe Farina. It doesn't help Andrew Simon as well because he completely ruined. No, it, it was not. Uh, it was, yeah, it was Andrew Simon. 
So it completely ruined um, his race there, that's for sure. So let's look at the biggest gainer and biggest loser in this race so far. So the biggest gainer appears to be Pierre Tarufi. He started 24th, he's up to 16th. Another big, and we've got Ken Watson who started 16th and he's in 8th. So that's pretty cool to see. And um, looking at the intervals. There we go. So get a better understanding. So McGrath is over thir is about 31 32 seconds behind uh, Rudolf Krauss who's in, who's behind the two uh, F2 cars. Okay, so that's all we need to see. So we'll go back to the normal board. Oh, here's some hangs about to, it looks like he's going to have to lap somebody, and I believe that is Rudolf Kraus, as he is the last driver to not be lapped in 18th place. And now here we are coming down to the chicane, we're going to be starting the last quarter of the race. Yes, it is Rudolf Kraus that he's trying to uh, lap. Oh, he does. Good, nearly snaps into the outside, nearly going into, into him. And here he is coming into the pit along with the F2 class leaders of Tarufi and Carter. What about Hawthorne? Hawthorne's coming in the slap. Okay. And Giuseppe Farina coming into the pit. Stevenson coming into the pit. Okay, so all the front runners coming into the pit. We can see the F2 cars of Carter and Tarufi in here as well. Will the F2 drivers come out ahead of Hanks, or will Hanks come out first? Well, it looks like they're taking their time, taking their time coming out. In fact, here comes uh, Tarufi. In fact, yeah, Tarufi is going to come out first. He is going to be behind Jim McGrath. I think Jim McGrath needs to pet. Well, all the front runners are taking their time, that's for sure. Oh, we've got someone coming out, it looks like. No, it's Trinity on coming in. It looks like all the, the F1 drivers are taking their time in the pits. It's a bit unusual. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. But it looks like really Fisher is going to come out first. Just, wow, so this is a bit of a turn. So Fisher comes out first, Stevenson second. Hawthorne drops to third, Wharton fourth. What's happened to Sam Hanks? He's so Ham, Sam Hanks has had a problem in the pits. Okay, so that's really not good news. So Hanks' uh, race win is potentially is yeah, it's long gone, long gone. He's dropped, gone from first down to ninth. He's behind Fritz Reese in eighth. So Fisher leads, Stevenson second, Hawthorne third, Wharton fourth. Hans Stuck is now into fifth. Graffery 6th, Clay 7th, Reese 8th, Hanks 9th, Giuseppe Farina also had a terrible pit, so he's dropped down to 10th. I'm looking for a down, the leading F2 driver is now Jim McGrath, and this Pierre Tarufi in a three way battle between Fila Resi and Andrew Simon. Of course, this is the intense battle to watch for this race in F2, Tarufi and Vila Resi. Because only one point separates, so basically whoever finishes ahead of the other is going to be the F2 champion. But what can happen here? Well, I think it's possible. If we come down to the chicane once again. And oh, and Sam Hanks it goes wide and hits Fisher. And that is it, Jeff Stevenson has just has got caught up, and that's the end of him. Oh, Alan Brown's had an incident as well. Okay, let's go replay with Alan Brown then. Okay, what happened to the Brits? Okay, coming down to the last... Uh, coming down towards the Shikings. There's Mike Hawthorne behind. Did Mike Hawthorne hit him? And... Oh, cl oh clipped the side of Alan Brown into the wall. Okay, so that was unfortunate for... Alan Brown, but it's also very really unfortunate Stevenson. Stevenson battling for the lead and he's made, made one mistake and it sent him out of the race, so that is really unfortunate. Hopefully Alan Brown can continue because he's on the grass, but it looks like Alan Brown's actually not going to be able to get out. I'm, I'm guessing he must have had uh, pretty bad, a lot of damage to his car for that to be the case. 
So Fisher leaves, Hawthorne in second, Kim Wharton it goes into third. So all of a sudden we've got both Brits in the podium positions. Okay, didn't think who would have thought that was going to be the case. Not it's not me, that's for sure. Uh, McGrath still le is currently leading the. Okay, Dennis Poor is on the. No, Alan Brown is on the move again, so thankfully he's not out of the race. And here comes Mike Hawthorne to take the lead of the race. But Mike Hawthorne. I don't think it's going to be enough for him, though, to uh, win the championship, even though he is now in the first. And look at that. There's the F2, leading F2 uh, uh, cars just ahead of them. And so that is Krauss, the last of the F1 drivers in the race in 15th coming into the pit, so he's probably going to be a lap down. There we go, coming towards the last corner, there's Pierre Tarufi ahead of him, and Pierre Tarufi's coming into the pits this lap. Along with Vila Resi and McGrath is in the pits as well. And now we've got a problem, okay, Rudolf Krauss going awfully slowly. And so Sam Hanks, Sam Hanks and Dwayne Carter have gone off. Okay, Hanks is moving. Okay, she's so free against the fast lap. We need to replay with Hanks. Find out what happened to him and Dwayne Carter. Okay, looks like there might be contact between, between the two American drivers. Yes, contact between uh, quote unquote teammates. They are both wrestling America and both of them have gone off. So, Dwayne Carter, I don't think Dwayne Carter can move. But this has definitely not been had Sam Hanks race. He's g gone from up the top down towards ninth, and that's the wing car of the race. So that's so we did. So we have our first F2 retirement of the race, and that's Dwayne Carter. I mean, Dwayne Carr has failed to finish every race, um, and he, but he's, he only debuted in the Indy 500, got pole position, but both the first main race he retired, and he got bonus point again. Here at Le Mans, and once again he's out of the race. That's de I don't think it was his fault. I think that was Sam Hanks's. There's Kim Wharton in third position with the two of the read fourth. So we've got both Brett and Swiss drivers in the top four, which is pretty cool. So Switzerland looking like looking to finish strong this season, and they absolutely are with both Swiss drivers in the top four. So here we are, starting the penultimate lap of the race. There's Hawthorne first, there's Ray Fisher and Graf in the battle for second. There's Ward to try to get into the action. Yeah, but Graf does get into second. There's Hans stuck in fifth position, be West Germany, probably bet West Germany's best finish of the season, as well as being uh, best, well actually no, the only other, the only race uh, they finish higher than that is third with uh, for its race at Canada, and here we go, coming up to start the final lap of the of the season. So here we go, the the, the four Olympics final lap of the season. A three or four point eight is personal best, not the fast lap of the race, but that's perfectly fine. We'll go on board with him as we take in this uh, dramatic season. There's Alberto Crespo, fourteenth. I better be lapped by him. Next guy is going to probably lap his. I guess that's totally all he's going to lap for a second time as he was the, as he's the last guy who's been lapped. Sam Hanks gets the fast lap a 3.03. Uh, a wee consolation from the American after losing uh, losing the very dominant 1 2 position for uh, America thanks to the pit stops going uh, horribly wrong. And there goes Hawthorne getting past Alberto Crespo relatively easily. As we go down this very, very, very long straight, there is, I believe, Tony Allman in the distance, who's not far off from being lapped by him. Now we'll go for the look, see how far is Crespo behind. Okay, Crespo does have, is, uh, does have a relatively uh, a relatively large distance. Not too large, but relatively. And coming down to the right hander. And now just coming up towards the hairpin. As we see Chisemi Freya getting past Clay, then stuck into fifth position. So Chisemi Freya having a last charge to ensure he wins the championship. There's Tony Allman just ahead of, uh, ahead of our overall leader. 
And if we go Oki War game past Griffin, so we could end up with a could end up with a British one two. Hawthorne going towards the outside, not able to find his way through. Tony totally Allman getting in the way, but it slips into the outside, and he is through Allman, putting him uh, two laps down now. And now coming up to the end of the fastest part of the track, and then we've got the here the left corner, and then we've got the right hander right here. And now we're on to the, the wobbly section of the track, which is full of turns. A simple left hander, and then we've got a sharper right turn, and then a left and a right, and then it's just coming up towards the finish line. And the way you go, left turn it is, coming around the right. And here we are coming up to the final section of the track. Well, this has been a very, very exciting final race of the season. And I was not expecting this, but it looks like Mike Hawthorne is going to win, win the Le Mans 2. And here we go, just as she came last ago, Mike Hawthorne wins the final race of the season. However, Farina in fifth position ensures that Farina is your 1952 Formula, Olymp Formula 1 Formula Olympic champion. And here he goes, Giuseppe Farina goes across the line, oh, goes up awfully wide, but he does get fifth place. But Giuseppe Farina is your. Formula Olympic champion, and looks like the and looks like Pierre Trufi is going to be your F2 Formula Olympic champion, with Vila Resi uh, way behind. But what a season in F2 that was! One point separated them coming to this race, and Pierre Trufi is going to take the win and ensure he is the F2 uh, Formula Olympic champion. Pierre Trufi wins wins the race and the championship. What a final race that was for both the F1 and F2 uh, championships. There's Vila Resi uh, going to finish second in the class. Jim McGrath just behind him is going to finish third. So a very strong finish to both these drivers. They both showed that they are worthy to become future F1 medalists and maybe even Formula Olympic champions themselves. So Vila Resi second, McGrath comes third. We just gotta wait for everyone else to finish. There's Andrew Simon uh, managing to stay ahead of uh, looks like Fritz Reese, who's gonna finish 11th behind Lord, uh, Roger Lawrence. And there you have it. Here is the final results of the season. Hawthorne wins, Graf Reese second, Wharton third, with Fisher team fourth. So both Swiss and Brits finishing the top four. An amazing result for them. And as you can see, Freya, your 1952 Formula Olympic champion, finishing a strong fifth position just ahead of Johnny Claves after going a bit wide. And flicking further down, Pierre Tarufi, the only driver to finish ahead of a Formula 1 driver, winning the 1952 F2 Formula Olympic season. So for 1956, we can expect Tarufi to be racing F1 for sure. Vila Resi finishes second in the championship, and so does Jim McGrath in third. And of course, here's the rest of the list. We've only had four retirements, three from Formula 1 and one from F2. Sean Bear retire lap, uh, lap 3, Ascari lap 4, Carter and Stevenson on lap 12. So what an amazing season that is. So for the final time, let's check the F1, F2 and the nation's tables. Looking at the F1 Championship, as you can see, Giuseppe Farina is your 1952 Formula Olympic Champion, just 6 points ahead of 2nd place which is occupied by Mike Hawthorne. Alberto Ascari DNFing has cost him the title as he has to settle for 3rd place. Robert Mansell and Ken Wharton round off the top 5, but have shouted out to Tula Graffery to gain his 3rd ever podium in the Formula Olympics, finishing in the top 10. In the F2 Championship, as you can see, Peter Tarufi, Luigi Villaresi and Jim McGrath finishing 1st, 2nd and 3rd respectively in the last race of the season to take 1st, 2nd and 3rd in the Drivers' Championship. Peter Tarufi winning by 6 points over Peter Tarufi and Jim McGrath finishing strong in 3rd place for the United States with Morris Trintillon and Sam Hanks who both were in F1 for this race finishing in the top 5. 
so looking at the nation's tail for one final time, yes we already knew Italy won the championship in the previous round, but the United Kingdom do finish second in the nation's table, with France having to take third position, but they do beat the United States who fortunately fell down to fifth after Switzerland's strong finish to the season. With Belgium sixth, Brazil 7th, Argentina 8th, West Germany coming home in 9th, the Netherlands and the East German team do finish at the bottom two of the table. So with that out of the way, it's time to give my final thoughts and to close out this amazing season. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I'll address the race first. It was a chaotic race with the pit stops once again proving to be a big factor of how the results go. With the two American uh, drivers of Chuck Stevenson and Sam Hanks, they had a strong advantage at the start of the race, but Chuck Stevenson ended up retiring for the race due to his own mistake, and Sam Hanks' his pit stop went horribly wrong, and then it went to, uh, even worse when there was a co collision between him and Dwayne Carter. Now, Dwayne Carter has only appeared in two races, but he's already shown that he is a really good driver, but he has been really unlucky with these two races, DNFing every race that he's attended. So do feel bad for doing Car Carter. I would love to see him come back for the 956 season and show what he is capable of. Now the season whole was absolutely chaotic from the start to the finish. Italy for the first half of the season absolutely dominated, uh, but they where Dominic was so good they were able to win the nation's championship before we went to the final round of the season. The UK did a really good job at finishing second in the nation's table thanks to uh, Sean Bear's retirement and misfortune going down Morris Trintignant's way. And Switzerland managed to beat the United States because they weren't in contention to win the top three in the nation's table but the United States were but Switzerland still beat them pushing the United States down to fifth. So I cannot wait to see what 1956 has in store for us, but I imagine there's going to be plenty of fireworks. So I hope you look forward to that, that Formula season as much as I am, and I'll see you there. Uh, so all I can really say is thank you for watching this season, and tune in for when we return for the next Formula Olympic Games.